Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Webinar Wednesdays with SMP. We're really glad to have you all here with us this morning. My name is Sunny Lawless, and I am the volunteer coordinator for our SMP programs. I'm going to be your host for this morning. And presenting with us today will be Shay Lewis and Jose Pinto. They're both our community outreach specialists in Georgia. And today we're going to talk about scams. During the presentation, you're welcome to type any questions that you might have into the chat, but we're going to hold those until the end of the presentation and we'll open it up for question and answer before we let you all go today. And there's also going to be a prize drawing at the end of the presentation today. You must have been registered to attend the webinar prior to 10:15 this morning um, in order for your name to be listed for the drawing and you do have to be present to win. Before we get started, I do have to let you know that this project is supported by the Administration for Community Living, Department of Health and Human Services as part of a financial assistance award with 100% funding by ACL and HHS. The contents are those of the authors and do not necessarily represent the official views of, nor are an endorsement by ACL, HHS, or the U.S. government. And if this is your first time joining us for a webinar Wednesdays, who is Senior Medicare Patrol? Well, SMPs are grant-funded projects of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Administration for Community Living. All SMP grantees have a shared national identity through a national program name and logo. Every state has an SMP program. In Georgia, Louisiana, and Mississippi, SMP is sponsored by AdviseWell. And our mission is to empower and assist Medicare beneficiaries, their families, and caregivers to prevent, detect, and report healthcare fraud, errors, and abuse. And we do that through outreach, counseling, and education. And last year, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of the SMP program. Now I'm going to turn things over to Shay, who is going to talk to us today about scams. All right. Good morning, everyone. All right. So what is a scam? A scam is defined as a dishonest or fraudulent scheme that attempts to take money or something of value from people. Next. There are various types of scams that seniors need to be aware of, which includes the following. Government impersonation scams, Medicare impersonation scams, identity theft. In the next slide, we're going to definitely break down some of these common scams that target seniors. And the first one is going to be government impersonator scams. Next slide. Scammers pretend to call you from government agencies, including Social Security, Medicare, and the IRS. Government impersonator scams often start with a call, email, or text message from someone who says they're with the government agency providing their employee ID number to sound official. They'll give you some reason as to why you need to provide your personal information immediately. So if you experience a call like this, immediately hang up the phone. It is a scammer. Please remember, government agencies won't call, email, or text you and ask for money or your personal information. Repeat this one more time. Remember, government agencies will not call, they will not email, nor text you, nor ask for money or your personal information. If you don't remember anything else from this presentation, please remember this important tip. Next slide. Some tips to avoid government impersonation scams include not wiring money, sending cash, or using gift cards or cryptocurrency to pay someone who says they're with the government. Scammers will ask you to send money using these specific brand um, payment methods since it's hard to track down the money and it's almost impossible to get it back. They'll take your money and they'll definitely disappear. Don't give out your financial or other personal information. Do not give out your financial or personal information to someone who calls, texts, or emails and says they're with the government. If you believe a call or message could be real, stop, hang up the phone, and call the government agency directly at a number you know is correct. 
or that may be on their governmental website. If you don't know if a website is considered a governmental site, always look for .gov at the end of the website. Don't click your caller ID. Don't click on links at all in unexpected emails or even text messages. Scammers send emails and text messages that look like they're from a government agency, but they are designed to steal your money and personal information. Please do not click on any links or pass it on to others. Simply delete the message. Next slide. If you become a victim of this scam, please go to the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC website to report the fraud. It will definitely guide you to the page and you'll have the opportunity to tell what happened by reporting the scam, the company, or the unwanted call. Next slide. If you receive a call, email, or text message asking for your Medicare number to get a new Medicare card, or offers medical equipment, or even asks for your bank account information in order to send you a new Medicare card. These are considered scammer calls, and if you're in need of a new card, Medicare will send it to you for free, again, for free, without you having to pay or do anything. On the next slide, we're gonna definitely discuss how to prevent Medicare impersonation scams. Scammers can sound very professional, stating that they're from Medicare and have your personal information. However, they're trying to steal your money, your Medicare information, or your identity. Next slide. So we're gonna talk about how to prevent Medicare impersonation scams. So here are some quick tips. If you get an unexpected phone call, email or text message, or even a DM on social media from someone claiming to be affiliated with Medicare or someone from CMS, do not answer the phone. The chances are that is a scammer. Do not call them back at the number they gave you and do not use the number that showed up on your caller ID. If it's a robocall, don't press any numbers. If you get an email or a text message, don't click on any of the links because the links could be designed to steal your personal or financial information. Call 1-800-MEDICARE for questions about your benefits, your card, your Medicare number, or to report suspicious activity. If you observe your MSN or your EOB statements and notice anything suspicious on your statement, here are some several tips that you can do to take in that situation. One, you want to call, contact your doctor's office because medical office representatives could have made a human error in the system, of course, with various healthcare codes, and accidentally typed the wrong one into the system. If nothing has changed, please contact our toll free number at 877 272 8720 to speak with a live representative regarding the situation. You would like to receive help to deal with Medicare fraud and abuse. Of course, you will contact us at our toll-free number, and you can also visit our website at smpresource.org. Now, if you have given out your personal information to a scammer, you need to definitely go to identitytheft.gov for steps that you can take to protect yourself. Next slide. All right, so what is identity theft? Identity theft is defined as a fraudulent acquisition and use of a person's private information using for financial gain. The identity thieves could steal your information in various ways, including applying for a credit card, filing taxes, or receiving medical services. With these particular acts, they can definitely damage your credit status and cost you time and money to restore your name in good faith. Next slide. Scammers and thieves are getting clever and clever as time progresses. So here are some preventative measures to keep in mind when it comes to identity theft. One, you would like to secure your social security number. Next one, don't share your personal information. That's including your date of birth, your social security number, your bank account number, because if someone asks for it. Review all of your credit card and bank account statements and your medical statements as well. You'll be surprised at what you can identify on your quarterly medical statements. 
Store your personal information in a safe in your home. If you do not have one, please purchase one. Shred receipts, credit card offers, account statements, and expired credit cards. There are many dumpster diver thieves that are always looking for your information through large uh, trash bins. Next slide. All right, up next is that time of the year, and this is a good time for us to learn about the various types of scams that typically, typically occur during the holidays. Next slide. Holidays are the time of year where you're going to enjoy your loved ones and celebrating in holiday cheer. Every year, thousands of people become victims of holiday scams. Scammers can rob you out of your hard earned money, personal information, and at least a festive mood. The two most preventative holiday scams are non-delivery and non-payment scams. In a, in a non-delivery scam, a buyer pays for goods or services they found online, but those items are never received. Conversely, a non-payment scam involves goods or services being shipped, but the seller is never paid. Your Medicare number is also used in a non-delivery scam. If your Medicare number falls into the wrong hands, Medicare could bill you and pay for items or services that you never received. Next slide. According to the Internet Crime Complaint Center's 2022 report, non-payment or non-delivery scams cost people more than $281 million. Credit card fraud accounted for another $264 million in losses. That is a lot of money to lose during the holidays, especially when purchasing these gifts in advance. The Internet Crime Complaint Center receives a large volume of complaints in the early months of each year, suggesting a correlation with the previous holiday season shopping scams. Next slide. Now here are some tips to avoid holiday scams. Whether you're a buyer or a seller, there are several ways you can protect yourself and your wallet this holiday season. Some of the tips include practice good cybersecurity hygiene. Practicing good cybersecurity hygiene means you don't want to click on any suspicious links or attachments and emails on websites or even social media. Phishing scams and similar crimes get you to click on links and give your personal information. Again, this is your name, password, and bank account information. Be wary if a company asks you to update your password or your account information. Look at the company's phone number on your own and call the company. Another thing is knowing who you're buying from or selling to. You want to make sure that you're checking each website's URL, which is the www at the top or at the bottom for iPhones, to make sure it's a legitimate and secure website. If a site that you're buying from, again, it should have HTTPS in the web address. If it doesn't, don't enter your information on that site. If you're purchasing from a company for the first time, you want to do your research and check reviews. Excuse me. Reviews are always helpful and provides a realistic view of the company's product, the customer service, and the shipping process. You want to verify the legitimacy of a buyer or seller before moving forward with a purchase. If you're purchasing an online marketplace or an auction website, check their feedback rating. Be wary of buyers and sellers with mostly unfavorable feedback uh, ratings or no ratings at all. This is a telltale sign. You want to avoid sellers who act as an authorized dealer or factory representatives of popular items in countries where there would be no such a deal, such as your luxury designer purses, jewelry, and et cetera. This is a very popular thing on social media platforms, including Facebook Marketplace and Instagram. Be wary of sellers who post an auction or advertisement as if they reside in the U.S. and then respond to questions by stating that they're out of the country on business, family emergencies, or similar reasons. Your third tip, you want to be careful of how you pay. 
Never wire your money, money directly to a seller. Avoid paying for items with prepaid gift cards. In these scams, a seller will ask you to send them a gift card number and PIN. Instead of using that gift card for your payment, the scammer will steal the funds and you will never receive your items. Use a credit card when shopping online and check your statements regularly. If you see any suspicious transaction, you will want to contact your credit card or your bank account to dispute the charges. And your last tip is monitoring the shipping process. Always get tracking numbers for your items when you buy something online, so you can definitely make sure that everything is being shipped and following the delivery process. Be suspicious of any credit card purchases where the address of the cardholder does not match the shipping address when you're selling. Always receive the credit the, the cardholder's authorization before shipping any products. And remember, if anything seems to be good to true, it is definitely it. Please be safe this holiday season shopping for your loved ones. Next slide. Now that you have learned about scams, Jose is, is going to discuss the three keys to success in stopping healthcare fraud, waste, and abuse. Jose. Thanks, Shay. Morning to everyone in the central time zone, afternoon to everyone in the eastern time zone. Uh, the three keys to success in preventing fraud, errors, and abuse. Of course, it's prevent, detect, and report, guys. Um, just always remember, never give your Medicare number to a stranger. All right? Don't carry your Medicare card, and Medicare will never call you. That's an important one. We have a lot of those uh, out in the community right now. Uh, I've been doing some presentations in Georgia, and people have reported that uh, people are calling them and identifying themselves as either Medicare or social security or IRS agents. So be really careful of that one, guys. They will send a letter. Uh, keep a record of your medical visits. Um, our volunteer, Mark, uh, he likes to hand out our um, medical records tracker. Um, I would suggest that any of you that see that out in the community to grab one when you see it at our table. Uh, that's a little booklet that you can keep that will, uh, when you leave your, your doctor's appointment, you can go ahead and write down uh, what you talked about with your doctor as well as what tests or uh, what drugs he has prescribed to you or she. So then you'll understand uh, what you have and you can compare it uh, to your EOB. Next slide, please. Um, that being said, it's always important to review your Medicare statements for mistakes. Uh, get your explanation of benefits or your quarterly report and make sure that you uh, are receiving uh, what is in the explanation of benefits. Uh, compare them to your personal records that I just discussed and look for three things. Charges for something you did not get, billing for the same services or supplies more than once, and services not ordered by your doctor. As Shay mentioned earlier, this could be human error, um, but it's important that you uh, keep on it and keep track of it. Next, please. Also, report suspected fraud, errors, and abuse. If you receive suspicious call, hang up, call your provider or plan if you have questions, and call SMP if you're not satisfied with the responses. As she had mentioned earlier, guys, we always like you to call your doctor's office or call this provider um, and find out what's going on before you call us. But if something just doesn't feel right, if you're not comfortable calling your doctor's office, give us a call, we can help you figure it out. Our number is 877-272-8720. Our web address is www.stopmedicarefraud.org. Next, please. One of the best ways that you can help and help your family and friends or your community is you can volunteer. Uh, we're always looking for good volunteers. We have a couple of great volunteers here in Georgia, Mark and Lynn. Uh, they do a wonderful job. Uh, Lynn does a lot of uh, uh, writing and uh, getting uh, word out into the community through uh, uh, different articles that she writes. And Mark is uh, basically uh, uh, one of us. He's a person that goes out into the community and tables events and talks to big groups and gets the word out about SMP. Uh, so I'd greatly appreciate it if anybody online or if you know or have a family member that would want to, uh, come on out and help us out. 
Um, as a volunteer, you're going to receive training on the basics of Medicare to provide short, scripted presentations and attend community events in your area. Learn more about healthcare errors, fraud, abuse, and scams, something you could take and use with your own family and friends. Participate in bi monthly webinars and trainings throughout the year. Um, guys, the training that uh, Sunny does through SMP is just wonderful. Um, I've sat in on a couple of those and it uh, gives you a lot of different information. And volunteering is flexible on an as needed basis. So don't worry, you're not going to be set up in, a, uh, in some type of schedule. Um, you can go ahead and just do what you can and um, get out in the community and talk to people about Medicare fraud. Next, please. Uh, together we can fight Medicare fraud. All right. Um, call our toll-free number, 877-272-8720. Visit our website, www.stopmedicarefraud.org, or there's our QR code. Just jump on there and open it up. That's it. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, Shay. All right, thank you, Shay and Jose, for that information. So coming up next month, we are going to discuss Medicare card scams. And that presentation is actually going to happen on um, Wednesday, December 13th. We are doing it a little earlier. That uh, graphic, I'm sorry, is wrong. It says December 20th, but we bumped it up a week because of the holiday. So it will be December 13th, and we will be sending out information um, very shortly for you to register to join us for that webinar Wednesday presentation. Okay, so now is the time for our prize drawing. Everyone who registered prior to 10.15 a.m. this morning has been entered for a chance to win. So we're gonna go ahead and open up that prize wheel. Um, the winner will receive their choice of a $25 Walmart or Amazon gift card, and you do have to be present to win. So let's go ahead and give the wheel a spin, and hopefully we'll have a winner. Let's see. Um, all right, well, it looks like Miss Peggy is our winner. Miss Peggy, I do see that you're on, so I will be reaching out to you a little bit later today um, to get some information from you, and we can make sure that um, we get that card for you. All right, so before we close things out for today, uh, we want to open it up for questions. So if you have a question about any of the information that we presented this morning, please raise your hand and I can unmute your line or you can send it through the chat if you prefer to do that. Um, your hand button is over here on the right hand side and you just click on it to raise it. And we'll see if we have any questions come through on the chat also. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions coming in. Of course, it, as always, if you think of something, you can reach out to us and let us know. This will conclude our presentation today on scams and holiday scams. You will be receiving an email after the webinar today with a link to a short survey. We would appreciate it if you would complete it, um, just so you could let ACL know how we did with today's presentation. Um, everyone, please, Thanks again for joining. Take care, and we hope to see you again next month when we talk about Medicare card scams. Hope everyone has a great uh, rest of your day, and hope to see you again soon. Thank you.